From 2007 to 2017, the universe was invaded by the live-action Transformers movie franchise, specifically the ones directed by Michael Bay, which would earn this movie franchise the nickname Bayformers. These films were huge blockbuster successes at the box office, and it got a whole new generation of fans into Transformers. In fact, lots of people are starting to get nostalgic for this series. However, on the other side of the coin, we have movie critics and longtime Transformers fans that didn't find this franchise to be any form of good. Now, with one exception, I've never watched any of these movies in full until this year, despite loving the wider Transformers series. I love the Transformers comics and cartoons, hell, I love the newer films like Bumblebee and Rise of the Bee, so it's gonna be interesting as I break down and experience some of the most divisive Transformers media out there. This is my personal retrospective on Michael Bay's Transformers movie franchise, or Bayformers. So the 2007 Transformers movie is often considered the best of the five Michael Bay directed films, and why I can't see it for both nostalgia reasons and breaking new ground at the time, I still don't think that makes it a good movie. Let's get one of my personal big gripes out of the way first. This film has military funding to help pay for all the fancy special effects, so there's a lot of scenes of military dudes doing military things alongside of robotic heroes, and man, these movies can get uncomfortably gratuitous about shoving these American soldiers down our face. This just just doesn't sit right with me, not just because of the propagandistic angle, though that's not helping, but a lot of classic and even modern Transformers designs have input from Japanese company Takara Tomi. So making these films so aggressively American, even down to how they're made, feels so wrong. It's like the filmmakers took the creative collaboration that got us to this point for granted in favor of typical Hollywood action movie tropes, and I'm not a fan. But it's not just the military that's the problem with this movie, because there's just so many damn human characters in the 2007 film. There's like three separate human subplots, the military guys, the hacking guys, and Sam with Wiki and friends. Now I somewhat get this to show the multiple perspectives on the Autobot Decepticon war, but also these subplots barely intertwine in meaningful ways throughout the film. It would have been more economical to reduce the amount of characters we have to make the ones we do have more memorable and flesh them out more while giving the story functions to others, but nope, we gotta cram as many quirky characters in as possible. It doesn't help that these characters are simply not endearing to me, mainly thanks to the film's sense of humor. In the process of making a quote-unquote mature Transformers movie, they crammed so many sex and piss jokes to appeal to unfunny hormonal teenagers that it forgot how juvenile these jokes are for everyone else in the audience. I don't mind humans in Transformers stories, but this film is so focused on the cringy, grease-filled American trucker humor that I can see why the disdain for the concept started in the first place. However, there were a few aspects of this movie I did enjoy. Spielberg was a major producer for the 2007 film as he saw the potential in the concept concept of Boy Meets Robot. So there are a few scenes that matches Spielberg's sense of wonder and whimsy found in his films quite well. There's also how Optimus is characterized in this first film. While the later films are now infamous for a psychotic Optimus Prime, this first film does a good job of capturing the strong yet gentle nature of the character. It's enhanced by the fact that they got Peter Cullen to return as Prime, which back then was a novelty for the franchise. Though on the topic of the Transformers themselves, I don't hate most of their designs, but I do find it pretty lame how most of the Decepticons in these films are bland shades of grey, which can make telling them apart hard to do, especially in the loud and messy action scenes. Transformers 2007 is a film I wish I liked more, but sadly I didn't enjoy it all that much. There's moments of fun and whimsy here, but it's all hampered by a flooded mess of a human cast, terrible greasy jokes, and the Transformers themselves feel like side characters in their own movie. The effects were decent though. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen is really, really bad. It takes everything bad about the first movie and decides to emphasize those traits to make for a very unpleasant viewing experience. So this movie was produced during the 2008 writer strike, so a first draft of the script was submitted and it apparently contained more Transformery elements. But because of the strike, that first draft was out of the writer's hand, so Michael Bay and the studio went ham on making the script dumber and louder than the last movie. In fact, in order to quote-unquote add more personality into the movie, Bay personally added skids and mud flaps, whom Mr. Bay described as gangsters while speaking like this. 
Yeah, there's no way around it. Skids and Mudflaps are pretty racist caricatures, which doesn't help that Skids is voiced by a white guy. It's one thing if they're just annoying comic relief, it's another to just be insulting and in bad taste. Like all the sex jokes in this movie! I'm tr trying, I'm trying so hard not to be a prude, but why are there so many sex jokes in my Transformers movies? Not even good ones, just haha, I'm a man, horny for women, laugh! We have shit like the male gazy angle Sam's girlfriend is shot at, and not to mention, Sam is almost physically violated by a pretender and his girlfriend blaming him for it when he was the one in danger in the scenario. It's just degenerate and gross. As for the actual Transformers stuff in the movie titled Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, I wish they committed to killing Optimus, man. I mean, the 80s movie did it and you could have brought him back in the third one if you really needed your poster boy. But then again, Sam and Prime's relationship is non-existent, so why am I even complaining about this? Also, as a big selling point set piece, we have the Combiner Robot Devastator joining the Decepticons, and I surprised I basically don't hate his portrayal or design here. They have a more colorful design than the other Jobber Decepticons in this movie franchise, and I think the more monstrous appearance works for him. Yeah, the enemy scrotum scene is so bad it's good, and I wish he did more than just suck up sand, but hey, this isn't the worst thing this movie has done. That was like the bare minimum of compliments I could have given this movie, because don't be fooled, Revenge of the Fallen sucks. It's a sequel of excess, with even more jingoistic pro-military propaganda, messy action scenes, and abrasively immature comedy being emphasized over anything else. It definitely earns its title of one of the worst American blockbusters of the 2000s, and it's not even the worst movie we're talking about today, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Transformers Dark of the Moon is a film people legitimately like. I'm not one of those people. This was the film that made me realize, oh god, these films are too long, since the average Bayformers films are two and a half hours per movie. I don't mind long movies, but the runtime isn't justified in any of these, since they are padded to hell and back with lame jokes and unneeded exposition. Dark of the Moon is already quite oppressive to the viewers, so making it longer makes it a test of agony and patience. Sentinel Prime is such a nothing twist villain, with only his motivation being stated, but not explored in any meaningful way. Though Leonard Nimoy does do a decent performance. With the caveat that they made him say the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few in one scene, which might be the hardest I've cringed at any of these movies, and that's saying something. However, my biggest problem with the film comes with the Autobots themselves. They've completed their transformation from heroic yet determined warriors to straight up violent hooligans with no self-control in Dark of the Moon. I know some argue in favor of this characterization by saying that the Autobots have been fighting so long and would crack under the pressure of war, and I don't think that's a good excuse. Heroic figures like the Autobots are supposed to teach us good morals like discipline, especially heroes that are marketed toward all ages. I'm okay with having a flawed Optimus Prime or him making mistakes, but what I'm not okay with is Prime's ultimatum screaming kill them all. Optimus used to be a brave yet caring soul, but now he's just another wannabe macho action hero that Peter Cullen tried to avoid with his performance of the character. I want to be clear I don't mind different interpretations of these characters, hell, my favorite Optimus Prime is the rookie leader from Transformers Animated so I can accept different variations on him, but what I can't accept is this blood-hungry, almost psychotic killing machine. None of this has helped that the military are still a big part of this movie, which, along with using Chicago as the means for a 9-11-2, makes the propaganda feel more maliciously manipulative even compared to the past films. Dark of the Moon is also the last movie with Shia LaBeouf as Sam with Wiki, and he doesn't even get a good send-off. I'll admit there was a little endearment I felt towards the character in the last two movies with his silly antics, but now he's just another good looking young action hero boy. Dark of the Moon really lives up to its name by being dreary and kinda depressing, but not in a tension filled exciting way, but in the fact that the movie is a dreary slog to get through. Originally, I was gonna write more than a paragraph analysis for the last two films in this series, but in the spirit of Michael Bay, I am so tired of these damn movies, so you're getting the cliff notes. Most of the major issues from the last film still apply to these last two ones, so I'm gonna focus on the unique failures of Age of Extinction and The Last Night in this verdict. Anyway, Age of Extinction served as a soft reboot of the franchise, with a new protagonist played by Mark Wahlberg and new Autobot companions to join Prime. I think it's conceptually neat how we have an older protagonist compared to our younger protagonist of the last three films, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's Mark Wahlberg and he's just kind of playing a Mark Wahlberg type, aka the most basic white guy you can find in Hollywood. Another idea I like more conceptually than an execution is the Autobots having more personality, but one of them is a yellow-faced robot who's going on about honor and IQs. Very classy there. 
Also, there's the infamous justifying a 21-year-old dating a 17-year-old scene, which, like, no. The Dinobots are this movie's big selling point, and not only do they not show up until the last 20 minutes of a two-and-a-half-hour movie, but Optimus continues his Macho Bro violent streak and threatens to kill the Dinobots if they don't work with him. How pleasant. Side note, this is the only one out of these five films I saw before watching them all this year for this video, in theaters no less, and even back then I hated this film. But it's not the worst one as we finally get to The Last Night. This film is really nauseating to watch thanks to the constantly changing aspect ratio and the amount of stuff they try to cram in. It was so nauseating, I couldn't even enjoy the infamous Anthony Hopkins off his shits performance because I was too dizzy from watching it. And if I actually focused on the movie's plot, I just felt numb. Thing. Oh, phew, I did it. So that's the Bayformers films, and I don't like any of these movies. I know there's some defenders out there who view these as masterworks because of their incompetency, but I just can't buy that. I enjoy me a so bad it's good piece of media, but I don't feel like the way it was done in Bayformers was any form of genuine, even back when Michael Bay cared. The stuff I enjoyed in these movies either lasted for a few seconds, happened because of Stockholm Syndrome, or was stuff done way better in other Transformers media. Seriously, don't even get me started about how these Bayformers films Films fail to compare to any other Transformers piece of media. But even on their own, I think Bayformers is just a bunch of hollow blockbusters made to appeal to the lowest common denominator. And that's it for my personal Bayformers retrospective. If you want good pieces of Transformers media, don't look here, just go read the new Skybound comics or watch Transformers Earthspark. Spark.